Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. We've talked about a lot of books and reading and the importance of reading to your kids, and so now I want to break it down in stages. And some of the, the next tidbits that I'm going to be giving are breaking it down in stages and giving you specific ideas for specific books. This first stage is pre-K through about first grade. What you want to do, and by now hopefully you're reading books every day to your children, you're getting an idea of what books that are well written, and you're getting an idea of what books your children like. And these are all very important things. I've talked about the importance of a child, you read a book to a child, your child, and they want it read to them again and again and again. There is something in that book that is speaking to their heart and soul, and just keep reading it to them. You want to choose books that have a vocabulary that is appropriate for their age and stage. You also want to choose books that don't have too much dialogue for the age and stage of your child. And one of the most important things that I feel is you don't want to choose books that I term as fluffy. These are books that have no substance to them and you will quickly, as you're reading the book, you will, you'll pick out a book and you will understand a book that's all fluff. You'll be bored stiff reading it, and your child will be bored stiff having you read it to them. Those are the ones that you dump and discard. Now, how can you avoid it? Just by what I said, and another thing is, talk to the librarian. Have them point you to some of the new books that are coming out, some of the Caldecott winners. Caldecott is an award that is given for the best children's illustration. As they get older, there are other awards that are given, um, they just, locked my mind right now, but the other book that I would suggest getting is the Jim Trelease Handbook, the Read Aloud Handbook by Jim Trelease. That became my Bible. I started reading it in 1979 and I read it every single year afterwards. It's been updated several times. He gives a marvelous an anthology, a list of books at the end, and gives a description and a synopsis of the book and also the ages and stages that you can read that particular book. So keep in mind that one. Um, all right, so let me, let me talk about some books that are my favorites and maybe that you hadn't heard about. Mary Rayner, has, she is a British author, and she's written a number of books about pigs. One of them is Mr. and Mrs. Pig's Evening Out. Now, it's hard to get Mary Rayner's books. Now, there's another one, uh, Garth Pig and the Ice Cream Lady, and Mr., uh, Mrs. Pig's Bulk Buy. But... Mrs. Pig is kind of a scatterbrain. She's got these 10 little piglets and she's exhausted and tired and she wants to go out on a date with her husband. So she calls a babysitting agency and she asks for a babysitter to come take care of her 10 little pigs. So who should show up at her door but a wolf? Well, Mrs. Pig, like I said, is scatterbrained and she's trying to get ready. So it doesn't even occur to her that she's leaving her little piglets, her 10 piglets, with a wolf. So... Before she and her husband leave, she turns to Mrs. Wolf and she says, um, help yourself to anything you'd like to eat. And the wolf said, thank you, I shall. So you see the wolf and, the, and it's a, a female wolf and she's sitting there reading and everything and all the 10 pigs are in bed. But the 10 pigs pick up that there's something not quite right. So then the wolf gets hungry. So instead of going to the refrigerator, she goes to the stove and she turns the oven on. And then she goes up to pick one of the pigs to cook. Well, all the pigs, you know, uh, immediately come and say, hey, this is bad. We've got to save our brother. So they go down there and they basically do save him. And uh, they get rid of the wolf. And, and when, the, when the parents come back, all the pigs tell her the story. And, of course, Mrs. Pig is, you know, horrified by what her poor little piglets went through. It is a delightful book. Your kids will absolutely love it, and they'll want it read a hundred times. Uh, Garth and the Ice Cream, or uh, Garth Pig and the Ice Cream Lady, also by Mary Rayner, is similar. He goes to get an ice cream cone, and it's so uh, who is it? But it's <laughs> the wolf again. And Mrs. Pig's Bulk Buy is all about pigs who just want to eat ketchup, and they want ketchup on everything. And that's why, of course, we have pink pigs today because they ate too much ketchup back when. So she is an excellent author. This one is Mrs. Pig Gets Cross. This is a series of different books about Mrs. Pig and her 10 little piglets. And of course, the wolf is in there as well. So look for her. I think your kids will absolutely love any books by Mary Rayner. Another one is Audrey and Don Wood. And this is Albert's Bad Word. 
So, you know, every child comes home with a bad word every once in a while. It's just part of growing up and it's part of stretching the limits and the boundaries. Okay, but this little boy, Albert, he hears all the adults around him using these bad words. And so he is going to this big, posh, social climbing party of his parents. And, well, and he doesn't want to. He's all dressed up in his finery. And in the process of it, they're playing croquet, and one of the mallets falls on his foot. Well, when it falls on his foot, out comes all the bad words that he's ever heard in his entire life. Well, his mother's horrified because now she looks terrible in front of all of her society friends. So she takes him in and she scrubs his mouth out with soap and she says, you know, you do not use bad words. Well, they show the bad word as this black little monster. And it's huge and big when it comes out of his mouth and when he's, you know, when he's getting his mouth washed out with soap, it sits on his shoulder. So he's feeling pretty bad and so he goes for a walk and he comes to where the gardener is. And the gardener can tell, the gardener can see the bad word on his shoulder and he invites him in and says, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard. We all get angry. We all get frustrated. We all have bad days. But he says, maybe we can think of different words. And so they put together this little cake and the cake becomes like a magic thing. And the little boy is helping and they bake the cake and then he eats it. And he's feeling better. So he goes back to the party. Well, the same thing happens. The mallet falls on his foot again. But this time, what comes out of his mouth? Something totally different. Read this book to your kids. They love it. It was one that our kids wanted me to read over and over again. Another one is Lynn Ward's The Biggest Bear. And I think I might have mentioned this one, but this is a classic. All of the pages are in sepia tones. It's a beautiful story about a boy. He finds this little bear. He keeps it in his house. It becomes too big. It needs to go back to where it, it was living. Um, and it's a charming story. Anything by Robert McClowski, Blueberries for Sal, Lentil, Make Way for Ducklings, those are all fabulous books with incredible, beautiful illustrations. Another one, anything by Dr. Seuss, as you know, are very, very popular. Anything that's a fairy tale is really popular with kids. If your child is having trouble like going to sleep at night or the whole bedtime ritual, Iris Sleeps Over is an excellent one. I also mentioned Iris Sleeps Over when I talked about transitional objects or a child's favorite toys or blankets. That one's by Bernard Waver and that's an excellent book. Sylvester and the Magic Pebble is a wonderful, wonderful book. Now there's more dialogue in this, but it's an incredible book about a family of three and this pebble, this magic pebble. Uh, I told you all about Mr. and Mrs. Pig. The Olivia books, those are more pig books. And keep in mind, too, that I've mentioned, when you're talking, um, most of the books, especially at the preschool to first grade level, most of them definitely, there's a lot of animals. And remember I said animals are people, children in little fur coats because it's less threatening for a child to see an animal do all these antics than it is for an actual child that they see in the book. The whole Curious George series, those are not to be missed. Those are classics to read year after day after day. You also have Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. So any of those, those are the books that you can get up and you can actually move to in the middle. So those just give you a few. If you go to my resource library, I literally have hundreds. If you go down to the bottom of my resource library, you can actually download my um, book list and it gives you ideas and all different kinds of ideas and different things that you can do with your child when you're reading books to them. So keep in mind, every day you want to read them. Those are the pre-K through first grade. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.